everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and I'm very excited to be coming to you today to show you how you can paint step by step, fully explain these gorgeous strawberries with little strawberry flower. Now, this awesome painting is part of this really cool 30 day painting program that I have going on. But of course, you can do this one just by itself. It can be one and done or part of the whole. To help me do this is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He makes sure that you can see everything that you need to see as a student. He zooms in that way. You see the techniques, you see the color mixes, all of the explanations become much more useful and he makes sure the energy keeps up. I want you guys to get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel. I'm going to show you how to paint this. So let's look at the colors on today's palette. I have Cad Yellow Medium. Over here I have Thalo Blue and Thalo Green, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Cad Red Medium. We have a Quinacridone Magenta, sometimes called Quinacridone Fuchsia. I have Naples Yellow Light, sometimes called Nickel Titanate or uh, Titanate Yellow. So you're gonna look for, check the descriptions for more information on that. Um, and I have Mars Black with titanium white in the center. To start this out, I'm going to take my Thalo Blue and Thalo Green using an artist knife and mix them together to create a Thalo Turquoise. And I'm going to add about half my white into that to create the background color that I'm going to be starting from. I'm going to want to thoroughly incorporate it. I'm not looking to make it loosely mixed. I just want to have those together. And that's going to be the starting color for my painting. Now I may want to put out some more white to work with over here. That's nice and clean and fresh as you do. And I will put out some more green. That way I have that nice and clear and crisp for the leaves. A little turquoise there. And I think I am good. So. Guess what we get to do? Hmm. Done. What do we do? I don't know. Can you predict it? Paint something? We're going to paint this whole canvas with that turquoise color using our big brush. I can't imagine. <laughs> so take a big brush, whatever you have that's very comfortable for you to paint large areas of canvas. I have a number 30 Ruby Satin Bright. I'm going to dip this in water, drag off the extra, and just paint all of this this color. Once the surface is completely dry after it's been painted, and that's an important thing to think about when you paint these grounds, make sure for this next step, it's dry and the surface is even cool because acrylic paint is really soft when it's warm. And if you're uh, doing any gritting work and you press too hard, that can really go into the paint while it's soft. So I'm gonna use this really cool tool. This is a sewing tool where you can chalk things out. It's got these little detail chalks that I can sharpen. And I'm gonna grab my T-square and I'm gonna go ahead and make a one inch by one inch grid. So what you should have when you're finished is this surface graded out in one by one squares and you should number one through eight at the top and one through eight to the bottom. This is gonna allow you to follow your reference grid to sketch in the image, even if you're not confident with drawing, that's really gonna be able to help you. But remember, if you're not even up to this, we do of course have a free traceable. So all of those things are available for you. All right, let's start putting this in and basically how this works. And I do explain this a lot because you might be coming in to watch this as a single video, not just as the whole 30 videos. You might be like, I just wanna paint some strawberries. I wanna paint all 30 videos. So I will be explaining my gridding kind of a little bit every time. Basically, I'm going to find a square and I'm going to see what lines are in the square. So if I'm on row one, well, row two, like one and two, right? I'm gonna look in here and say, okay, so how is this going? I've got a leaf that's going to come up here, peek into one and come down. Another little tuck leaf that's right there. Now on three, I not only have some leaves, right? The leaves that are gonna come here, but I have this sort of top. And you can come here and all, all you've gotta do is just draw what you see. Now we're gonna do that through the whole grid until we have all of the image transferred or copied on to here. 
Okay, what was wonderful about that is there, there were some complex shape relationships in there, but in a lot of ways, those shapes are more simplified. So it's a great way for you to cut your teeth on that technique. This is step one. I cannot wait to show you step two. I think you're going to find it a lot of fun. So now for step two, I'm going to paint in the more neutral background. This is going to be a much lighter value than we initially painted in. You might wonder why. One is that I wanted this deep aqua to be peeking out little spots here as we paint very loosely. And two, because it was going to give a nice depth for the transparency of the paint. So those are the two reasons that I picked that ground. Let's paint in the background, though. Um, I'm going to grab my number eight cat's tongue. You could get a number eight filbert or a number eight round. I'm going to take my turquoise into my white, and I'm going to work a very light color. This is much lighter than what we painted in, and I'm going to paint around carefully all my little objects. Making sure that I keep the contour lines intact. Just keep coming around. You just want to work whatever brush you're working. You want to work it on the toe around your main focal point, which in this case is the strawberries. But this would be true, you know, if your focal point were a coffee cup or even a landscape, you would find your focal points and work around those. I want this to be a very light value. This also did a lot to help us be able to see the chalk lines that we had mm -hmm. as well, I think. So there were like a ton of reasons to be involved in it this way. And you can see these two colors kind of layer beautifully over each other a little bit. They really do. Yeah, It's a nice, it's a nice little harmony for the strawberries to be sitting on, I feel. Well, their leaves kind of come back here, so I definitely want to make sure I have that space left for green around the mm -hmm. side. You can paint that as meticulously or as loosely as you want. That's really a preference for the painter in general. Once I kind of have that going in there, I'm going to need to dry this so I can put it on its side and paint the bottom. I'm going to add a little more depth and interest to this background. I'm going to get my brush wet. And I'm going to take a little bit of my Naples light, the nickel tighten it. That's going to, we're going to have to come up with a way to explain this color since everybody has a different name for it. I have a lot of extra information on how you want to find it. So it's definitely out there. And I'm going to come up here and add a little bit of this kind of yellow up here in the corner. Maybe here as well. Kind of loosely coming around in the top. I may get back into my light value and work these two. into each other more a bit. This will really help my strawberries feel like they're in a very sophisticated background. I'm just trying to work this while it's wet. And you'll notice that I am doing this in a painterly manner. I am not smoothing my brush strokes. I am not hiding my brush strokes. I am simply confidently putting in those brush strokes. And that's your goal as well. Now, here at the bottom, as fun as this kind of 
beautiful expressive background is here at the bottom we've got to do a little bit of a shadow and how we're going to get that is we're going to take our ultramarine blue and some of our white and we're going to mix them together and you'll notice when you work with phthalo blue and ultramarine blue that phthalo blue has a turquoise kind of cast to it as a bit of a yellow or green in it the ultramarine has a bit of a red so sometimes it reads as a purple but what's also wonderful about it, because it is this color, it makes a really fun shadow value. Mm. It just kind of pops in the background. I'm putting that here. I may come in and kind of create a halfway blended part right here. What I'm doing is just trying to make sure that there isn't you know, a crazy line <laughs> at the bottom, working that out. Again, loosely, I'm not trying to hide the brush strokes. I'm not taking that away from everything. And then while all of that is still wet, still with my number eight, I'm gonna come in with just a little more of my ultramarine. And I may even get a smidge of my quinacridone involved into this. And I'll come right underneath, strawberry here. And then again, under the strawberry here. Let's take the toe of our brush and kind of diffuse a little bit. I'm just sort of blending it and making it not a crisp line, but a vocally soft line. We've got that there. So that gives us some type of the beginning of a shadow there. A little more blue. before you know it. You have a really lovely shadow to anchor your strawberries. This will become really important later when you paint them in because oftentimes for new painters, forgetting to add the shadow, the gravity to the piece is what makes it feel like all the objects are floating everywhere. So I can't wait to show you step three. This was step two. I can't wait to show you step three. As we're moving on to step three, we're going to be refining these objects a little bit and blocking them in. So my goal is going to be to try to capture the value of the colors, like how light or dark they are, and get them laid in in a very confident, loose, expressive way. Now, if you're painting along at home and you're feeling like you wanna blend more, or you're feeling like you wanna refine it more, guess what? That's completely fine. If you're trying to learn to kind of relax and loosen up, this might be a good thing to follow along with. I'm gonna dip my brush in water. This is a number six bright. And I'm gonna come in here and grab my quinacridone with a smidge of my cad red. So I'm using that quinacridone to kind of deepen it, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna come here, going around the flower. and try to block in areas that I see. Might be using more of that kind of range. I really love, personally, the combo of uh, quinacridone and cad red medium. I mm -hmm. just think it's just awesome sauce. I use it a lot. I think when you see it against colors like aqua like this, you realize like what a beautiful, powerful, ama amazing, you know, color that it is. With the strawberries, there's a lot to do because they have uh, a lot of texture. On top about worrying that we've got the shadows where we want the shadows, we've got to worry about like, you know, the fact that there's, these little divots on the strawberry and the strawberries in shadow and then those divots have a highlight and a shadow that we've got to contend with to create that seed texture and we will be in all like sense of purposes dealing with that quite a lot let's see i'm putting that right there 
you can see where I'm putting these values. It is entirely possible that even at this stage, the The grid is still helpful to you. Now, I don't have that much of this here. It's really only a little bit here over on the side. Hmm. Just the shadow value. Yeah, it's just a bit of that shadow value. And I'm going to come forward and now I'm going to be moving more into a slightly brighter version of this. So it's just a bit stronger to the CAD. And you can see that right there. And it's stronger to the magenta. Mm. So hopefully what you're picking up on is kind of just catching into values and different elements of that. If you need to come back stronger into the magenta, that's really easy to do. Just come right back in. And I can even get a little bit of my ultramarine to deepen a color. So there's a lot that I can have going on. There's a nice little shadow that comes through here. And I'll go ahead and get a little of my ultramarine and there's a very important kind of little shadow that's happening right here under this leaf i'm going to be dealing with one yeah we're getting that in together so right now it looks a little splotchy but you're starting to see what objects are essentially what we've got to get this in now this is very interesting because the outer edge to the inner core of it is very different. And what I find is nice is to come through here and rank around the strawberry. And then as we go in, a lot of times when people want to lighten red, they want to add white to it. And what that really gets you is essentially pink, but the center of a strawberry isn't pink. It's just a warmer red. So when you're trying to lighten a red value, sometimes what you actually want to do, interestingly enough, is add a bit of yellow. Hmm. And that... Luckily, all these colors work fairly well together. And if you notice on your strawberry, it has its nice sort of dark outer edge, right? The one that comes around here. But the inside of it lightens up quite a lot. And interestingly enough, as I come more towards the center, I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to add this amazing green bias yellow into there. And come here, pulling out from where fabulous center is going to be. And you'll find these colors are just really luminous to the eye. Yeah. And it's, I, I really like it. Like the color of this painting is going to be really pretty. And frankly, just large paintings of fruit in general are fun, are pretty, and look good in your home. Hmm. So I can't wait to show you step four of this project.
So as we're going forward in step four, we're going to continue to lay in the kind of basic values that we have for the objects. We can start putting in some of these leaves. We can start even talking about the flower. But right now, let's start getting into the green of the leaves. So I have my phthalo green here. I have burnt sienna and I have my pad yellow. I also have like a range of oranges and things. I put out a little more white, but these colors are going to really help me be able to get my green leaves. So let's pull out a little bit of our phthalo green and get some of our burnt sienna into it. And you can see that that makes a very deep color. And this can be the deepest color that we have on our leaves. So where you see that there is a strong shadow of color, you're going to want to come in and put that deep value. Just coming in here and making sure that you've got like some deep value. There's like an edge here on this one. I think it's also important to bring that in around the side. This coming on here is actually pretty light for the most part. Come through here. Pulling those in and sometimes you've got to take these parts in to see where you're at with other objects and that's important to realize as well mm. like trying to check where you're at with other objects like oh i have more strawberry here but it's hard to see certain things until you get other parts in again and i'm still just on this number six bright and i'm just painting you know pretty loosely i am going to be doing a lot of mixing of paint on the surface of the canvas why is that? Well, it allows for a lot of expressive opportunity. When the paint mix is here, instead of here, it's not as controlled or rigid or regimented. I'm going to be over here. I'm going to just be putting some of these values where these leaves are. They're going to definitely need me to add some highlights for them to be realized. But it's nice to get that kind of little leaf going out there. These are a lot brighter. I would say the only one that has even a kind of a dark value to it is this. And, I, and the thing to realize with these is that they have kind of a rough edge. So with strawberries, you do kind of want to get that zigzag edge mm -hmm. uh, where you see the big parts of the leaves with the blooms. That's going to be a thing. Now, I can rinse out, and I'm going to come. I have my burnt sienna, and I have my phthalo green, but I'm going to come in and add a little bit of yellow. This is going to be a brighter green, but not such a bright green as, say, phthalo blue and cad yellow. Just pulling that there. And I'm just looking for the places where the value of this is, how light or dark it is, where would that go? Where is this depth of color going to go? Even more over here, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow into this. And to really exaggerate the zigs, I'm going to use the brush, and you can see it's giving me that little mm -hmm. zigzag. This is what's going to help me get that. And as I'm coming back, I can deepen that value. And I will exaggerate the zig coming back that way. Ah, mm. yeah, we're not, we're like being super cool here with that, right? We have that little value, and that new value, and these are starting to come together. It's starting to have a moment, right? I'm gonna 
add just a bit more yellow. This is just a lighter value. And maybe even this time I'm going to grab my light Naples, just giving myself a very light color for this edge, right? Because this has got the most backlight on it. And I will use this pullback method. I'm on the edge. I'm pulling back, pulling back. And that's giving me the ziggy zag. It's easy for me to add more green and depth into the color. At this stage, you can see it just pulls nicely. If you want to get back into the light value that you have, you just get back into that original mix. See how we do? Mm -hmm. And just pull that back. And I come here and maybe more into the cad yellow. Sometimes leaves are light. I think that one's going to come around the edge here. Be light on the top. And that just lets you know where some light is hitting them. And then, interestingly enough, I have all these colors, but I'm going to get a little bit more of my green in here. And I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to add some white. And it creates a very interesting color. But the thing is, is that strawberry leaves sometimes have a fuzz on them mm -hmm. that makes some of these colors quite, quite fuzzy in the green, like down the center of this right here. And then we'll pull this back here, knowing that our leaves continue over here. in a way. And now that I have that kind of main structure in, I can come in with the red that I missed. Right at that stage. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got just a few more here that we have to talk about. These are actually sort of barely showing. I'm going to get a little brown into it to tenant. They're like more on the edge because this one is a cut sort of strawberry. And I'm going to bring this in here just a bit, this green. I'm going to get way more into that Naples. I'm going to get a lot of white. And I'm going to bring that in. Just that far. We'll come back with the uh, uh, pink to green, but I just want to show that. That so you can see where we put that little highlight there. All right. So this is a great time to look and see where you're at on the stages. Are you blocking in? OK, do you have your vowels? Do you have your shadows where your shadows go? Do you have your highlights, where your highlights go? How are you doing on your mixes? Where are you at? It's a great place to like stop here and make sure that you're where we are in the painting. Now, I cannot wait to show you the next step. I think you are gonna love it. What step will we be on, baby? The next one is step five. Five, five alive. Number five is alive. <laughs> Sip your coffee. All right, I'll see you for step five. In step five, I think I'm going to continue to resolve out this part of the strawberry, start to put in the flower, and begin to refine elements around the composition to pull it all together. I'm going to remain right now on my number six bright, and then when I'm ready, I will go ahead and probably switch it to a round. But right now, I'm going to stay on my number six bright. If you're out of your quinacridone, uh, and again, you can see here, this one's called quinacridone fuchsia, but it's also most commonly called in many paint lines, quinacridone magenta. So you can find it easily. I'm going to take this and a little bit of my cad red and a good bit of my white. And this is the part that's the sauce, a little bit of my Naples yellow light here. And I'm going to come into the center of the strawberry.
with just a lot more of this. This is so classically what you would see in a strawberry, right? Those set, those cut centers. Mm -hmm. They are so often there. Maybe a little darker in value than I would want, but there's some nice uh, highlights and I can even come in and maybe talk a little bit about how the center has somewhat of a crack there. You know? And blend in some of the green that I had to the pink. Do you see how I'm transitioning those two colors? Yeah. Kind of creating a half step that will let me really merge those two values into each other. Getting those half steps are so important. And remember, when you're doing colors, it's so much more important for your result. I'm going to go ahead and sort of dry brush this way, sort of softening the shape of this. Get into my white again. It's really important to get the light value that has that pink kind of hint to it. Mm. Let me pull that a little more to a point, exaggerate that point. And we've got little veins and elements that we need to pull out into the strawberry mm. for sure. But we want to get this part kind of worked out first. More of my Quinn and Cad. You'll see me tapping in this deep little kind of veining. And it's that kind of stuff that you've really got to hit on your paintings when you're trying to make them look a particular kind of way. Now, there's so many round angles here. And yeah, I can work everything on the corner of my brush. When you're working a bright and you're trying to work round, you work the corner of your brush. But I don't have to do that because I have a round brush <laughs> for this project. So I'm going to use it. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and get into my white here. And this is going to give me a great base for the petals. I will actually be coming up and adding like bright warm uh, white whites to them where there's a lot of yellow in the white. Mm -hmm. But I want this cool to help me shape the petal. The other thing when you're doing petals, it's, it's nice to make sure that your brush strokes kind of go the direction that the petal grows. There you go, there's the layer over that. And the layer over that. And we are putting this in a very rough case scenario right now. Hmm. I'm gonna bring this in farther than I need it because I can put the yellow back out there. And I'm going to do a very interesting thing at this time. I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine into my quinacridone, which makes a deep purple. And I'll come here and I will exaggerate a couple of lines. I will come under the petal, come between these two, And make sure that there's some deep values I'm doing behind the mm -hmm. flower. Just helping those, that space kind of, you can see, stand out a little bit. You can always take your brush and soften the edge so it's not hard or obvious. Just need to know that that's there. You know, put it where it needs to be. In the center, 
I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow and some of my cad red and I'm going to make an orange. Interesting sort of orange. And then you see this bright green that I have here? This is a weird color always to get where you take the orange into the green. But it gives you that muted yellow that's the base of the flower because there's always a little bit of chlorophyll in these. Mm. So there'll be a green cast. I want to make sure that I have that green cast. And to that end, if I've got some of my yellow and my green and it's sort of oranged out, right, how we have here. Mm -hmm. Now you want it bright to the yellow, right? Like a like a cool yellow, you know, or a very yellow green. Get into your white. And you're gonna come around. Add this sort of around your yellow center. A little bit of that green there and it catching that that element that you have going on and while we have the round we can kind of even refine some of the stuff on our on our wonderful strawberry I can take a little of my orange into my brown over here and I come underneath Pick that up, that's kind of lovely. Bringing this along some of the petals. It's fun. Rinsing out. Now I'm going to come in and Let's really pop some interesting highlights and values and colors and everything. Like I can get some of my navel's yellow into that mix and make sure it's still green, but kind of brightened. And I find like right here, I get some white. Bringing that lighter value at these leaves coming down. Really speaking about that space. And you can always get into your green more by just adding green. Hmm. You can just create all these little moments in your leaves. Strawberry leaves are as important as the strawberry itself. It really it is. Get a little white into that. I'll go ahead and tip that a bit with some white. You can see that happening. So we're tipping that, mm -hmm. refining that out. Find that white on the top. Dry brushing that over, you can see. And just through that, we're getting a sense of what's happening with our leaves. I can always come back with a little bit of my ultramarine and my phthalo green and make a very interesting kind of teal. It's different than the phthalo turquoise that I'm so fond of making. I'm going to just make sure that some of the darker values that we need to have on these petals are here. Just pulling those in. So can you see where we're getting some highlights and some shadows to find mm -hmm. out? Let's just keep playing with those with those spaces, right? Yeah. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Why not? I say yes, you can. There we go. 
I'm still defining those little weaves, those little lines. Coming into the yellow, maybe getting some of my Naples yellow light. I like catching those little highlights as they are because they kind of just pop off of everything, don't they? Mm -hmm. It's very fun for me. I'm going to rinse out. Here's one of the few places I can get into more of my saturated greens. Is on the leaves. And if I need to get more yellow green and some white over here, which is really stunning, and come on the edge again. Just pulling this in. See how the stroke is just pulling it in? Mm -hmm. We see the leaf, we're aware it's a leaf. But we're not trying to paint every single vein in the leaf, right? Yep. Wow, that's looking really good. Mm -hmm. So I think we're on to step six. That's the next one. Step six. It's the fix. Step six. Are we going to start making like little rhymes? You are. Maybe somebody is. If you are, that's okay too. All right, I will see you back here for step six. I think you're going to love what we do next. So I'm looking forward to step six, because at this point in the painting, we're starting to resolve some of our early decisions, getting some of the essential details and values that really pull it together and says to us, this is a shiny strawberry or this is juicy. And really, this is the place that I want to say, like a lot of beginners, like kind of get here or before here, get a little bit frustrated and quit out when actually they're just like two thirds of the way or halfway through the painting. And it's from here to the end that this whole thing comes together. And, and it's what I love about art. It's like the magic sauce of mm -hmm. the project as we go for it. I feel. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm going to come in and get a little bit of my quinacridone and my cad red again like I had earlier. And I'm using my round number four. I'm just going to come around this wonderful little strawberry. Maybe a little more into my magenta, just a bit. I'm going to pull in just a some value, kind of inward. Can you see how that's kind of going inward? Mm -hmm. I don't want to make zebra stripes. I just want a subtle striation kind of going inward. I really love that outer color. That's really good to me, but I've got to figure out how I'm going to get that nice white center of that strawberry looking like the nice white center of a strawberry. So let's get our magenta and our cad red into our crazy yellow, which is so cool. Such a great yellow. And then add some white to it. And we're going to start to talk about these little vein spaces that are coming out. And one of the things I, may, I need to do is make sure that I'm not, and I may need to put out some more white, right? I don't, I don't want to make like, um, again, stripes. Stripes is not the goal. Mm. In no way is stripes the goal. Stripes is what we're trying to avoid. Now, it may look like stripes to you if you're up close on the painting for a consistently long amount of time. I'm changing for clean water. It's always good to change for clean water when you need to. Ah, there we go. See how we're, we're there? Just trying to get that wonderful like, effect. 
And it doesn't necessarily have to be like a line. See, I'm just sort of dashing the brush. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about these little color marks, but trying to make sure that I don't pull the eye on them so hard that they take over, well, gosh, the entire painting. Yeah. They're important. If you're talking about the center of a strawberry, this is a very important part of the strawberry. We all kind of have a feeling about like the center of the strawberry, don't we? Mm hmm I like how that's looking. Let's back up from that and see how we're doing. That doesn't look bad. Yeah, it's looking really good. Now, but even though that doesn't look bad, we're going to take a little bit of my white, maybe get crazy with some cad yellow into it, make a super light color. Come here and add a bit of that very bright highlight. Right here, coming down, adding a bit of that. Mm hmm and I see some right here. So it's not just that we got some shadows in there. We want to, oh, look at that. <laughs> see, it just when it, it really happens, it just great. happens. It's like, oh, I'm right there. Now, this little fellow is in kind of a, a difficult position for us. And we've got to kind of get that in a little bit better. So I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and my uh, magenta. And I'm going to make sure that that arc is good. I kind of lost my arc. There we go. Now where I have leaves casting shadows, we know we want to get into the magenta and sometimes even into the ultramarine to get a little shadow going. Because there would be one, right? Mm -hmm. There'd be one right here, all around the flower, a little shadow. And we would definitely be seeing some of that, you know, in these spots here, quite dark. This here would be quite dark. We can take everything right up to the leaf though. Kind of crisp anything up we want to crisp up. Here underneath this, I do think I'll want a shadow. So I'm going to come back with a little bit of my blue and come under here. Make sure that there's a shadow a bit there. So that's a little more finished out. And one of the things I can start doing is like coming in here to like our flower. The thing about the flower is you kind of sometimes want to do the object that's furthest forward last, right? That way you can really work everything behind it. So let's take a little bit of my cad red and a lot of my magenta and definitely get some of that ultramarine in it, and that makes that dark strawberry color, right? Hmm. Now, what we see here on the strawberries is like a dark space. So we'll put the dark space in first. We won't really see the divots on the strawberries till we put the highlights. And there's a couple of highlights on the strawberries. There's the highlights around their seed pods, and then there's the highlights around like large parts of the skin. Mm. Here we've got so much of that going on, but I feel like I need almost like another, this one's kind of like in shadow, so it's really good, but this one here is much more in light. I feel like I need another layer. So a little bit of my magenta and a lot more of my cad red up here there we go just kind of brightening that little strawberry up doesn't it mm -hmm. just give it a little a little pop 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 and if ever i need to i'm sort of blend the two reds together magenta is just such a nice way of doing it where it can soften any like overtly hard line as you can see making it less intense 
looking pretty good. Let's get some of those seed pods going in there. We know what we like, right? Mm-hmm. You can see I'm just bringing over a little more of the red. And we'll add these places. You know, pay attention to how the seeds are, right? Now, you don't have to do every seed. Doing every seed is, you know, more about uh, realism than anything else, right? But you have to do the seeds enough. I'm grabbing a darker color. So we kind of have those dark shadows. That always helps us really feel those seeds, I think. And then I'm going to come over and do our orange again. That wonderful orange. That we kind of get into here, even almost into the little bit of green. I'll add some white to it. A really crazy cool color. And I'm going to start popping... Little marks that are seeds. Is that how we're doing? Just little mm -hmm. marks. Little marks that are seeds. Start popping little marks that are seeds. Just all over the place. Just all over the place. You know, where we gave shadows, because they do need the shadows to kind of work with. Now I could through several mixtures, make some of the seeds darker and some of the seeds lighter. But another thing I can do is when they're dry, I can glaze the ones that are in shadow, which is a lot more what I'm likely to do once I get all my values done, to come back and sort of glaze what would be in shadow and kind of knock those back. To that end though, I am gonna come back with another like lighter mix of what I'm doing and hit some of them. Just, you know, to, to say that they're a little more complex than a single color. And then that with the glaze, we are good, good, good. How are you liking that? I love it. It's looking really good. So we're going to be moving on to step... Seven? Seven! Seven is going to be heaven because we're going to start pulling the whole painting together. All right. I can't wait to see, show you how we kind of start to really resolve this and pull this whole piece together and just make it pop, pop, pop. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. So step seven, we're going to mostly focus kind of on that flower and get that sort of resolved, right? Because he's kind of a big focal point in the painting. And you know how we know it's the focal point? Mm. In the middle? No. Well, yes. But it's the contrast. It's the mm. dark to lightest point in the painting that tends to be our focal point. And so this being our lightest object against our darkest objects, makes that flower pull the eye and kind of pulls in all this balance and everything that we've been doing into the flower so that we can see it. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of my navels yellow and my titanium white. And I'm going to start to come to the outside of this flower, popping in a little bit of that. See how that's going? Just getting that first. It's not pure white yet. But it's starting to lighten those petals so that you can kind of see it more, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to begin to work this inside. And the inside is really fascinating. I'm going to get my, make sure my brush is going and I'll just get some yellow that I have here and it's okay that's loosely mixed into orange or other colors. I don't mind that. And I'm going to start to kind of tap in some of this yellow here in the center.
And if I want to lighten it, I'll come into my white and then those will be kind of lighter little center dots. Up here on the edge, I want some distinctly almost like orange bits. Aren't those wonderful? I love the center of this flower. Center of the flower. Now I'm going to come in and get some just white still on my number four. And add a little bit of the white. Highlight onto the petals just to allow it to sort of. Pop. So it's popping now. See it pop? Mm hmm. Pull a little yellow out and we're going to get some very light yellow. And right here, mix in that. So yeah, it's a loose little flower, but when you look at it, it's just stunning. And doesn't it look like every perfect strawberry flower that you've ever seen? Yep. Okay. So I like it. I'm making the flower step seven. That way you have a chance to focus on it. Because in my okay. experience, that's where everybody starts to get a little tense because they have so much feeling about the flower and they have a perfect flower in their mind and they're like, oh, I'm under so much pressure on the flower. So giving you a second to really focus on that part lets you almost relax into it, mm. right? So I'm not asking you to pull your focus away from something that you're naturally going to want to put it into. Right. Now on step eight, what we're going to do is the finishing touches that pop the strawberries and make the whole painting sing, the high contrast, those things that are going to make this feel gorgeous and just yummy and delicious and you have to hang it on the wall. Yep. Okay. Step eight is great because that's where we're going to put in our deep shadows, our bright highlights, the things that make these objects really stand out and pop against each other. And this is my favorite part of the painting because it's like you've been going along the whole time and then you see that the painting's coming out. Now I've added out some phthalo blue. I'm going to be getting a little bit into my black. This is the only time in the painting that I'm really compelled to get into my black. So like if I were to say take my green and a little bit of my black together. And you'll notice even then I'm not going to do pure black. Right. I'll just like shade the green with that black. I will come along these different places and put some of these deeper darker values where they would go. Mm. Right. Because we want to we want to create these sort of just a few places where the shadows are very noticeable in the piece. A lot of people will avoid using black at all. And what I would say is don't avoid using black. It's a fantastic color. It doesn't happen a lot in nature, um, but it does happen. And also it's a great way for us to sometimes talk about a deep shadow or an event that's really pivotal. Let's get into the mm -hmm. blue. And maybe come along here and I'm going to make a very deep value in that rage, which is going to help it push back more. Another little one there. Another thing I can do, I can thin it out thin, thin, thin. That's the blue and the black kind of thinner. And I can also come to one side of the seed and add that shadow. See where that shadow go? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Even a couple places pull in some deeper values. Even past where I pulled it in. Not everywhere, but just like little touches of that so that that is nice and standing out. You know? Working those out. Now, again, the blue and the black is our shadow on our seed, right? Mm. And on this time, it's going to be on the bottom side. So we're going to add some shadows to the bottom sides of our seeds. That's pretty great. And that kind of really creates some depth. Now you can start to see the seeds pop and come together. 
you don't want to be heavy handed with this. You want to be a little delicate. You want to, you know, really be thoughtful about how you use that technique because it's going to make such a big impact on your face. Now, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and some of my black. And I'm going to create just a smidge of super deep shadow. See that right there? Mm -hmm. You need a smidge of super deep shadow where your objects are well lit and connect with a solid surface. These little bits of pop are just everything. Mm -hmm. Now, that is still not enough. <laughs> because we're going to do a couple things to really pop the seeds. Right? And I think what I'm going to do... Is we're not going to even get into the red. We're going to take our phthalo blue and our titanium white and we're going to make our reflection color from that you come here and start to add a reflection to some of those little seed pods and i often have to dip my brush in water just to make sure that the flow on this is working really well. And you can see that we're just really exaggerating those, right? Which is kind of wonderful. And oh, these just really. Just exaggerating those a bit. And you can even come up here and hit some of these. All right. And then maybe even kind of tap out. A little bit of what's happening here, a little bit of reflection there. Got that started. See how that's looking? It's starting to pop. Mm -hmm. Pop, pop, pop. Now, also here, we have quite a lot of uh, interesting reflection that's happening. And I'm going to continue to use my number four to sort of talk about this reflective side of the strawberry and how it's going to come around here and of a higher reflection and then definitely in through here and again using the blue how are we doing there looking pretty good guys mm -hmm. it's looking spectacular it's like loose but yet Kind of not, and that's kind of wonderful. And then let's take some pure white and get some hot spots going, right? Got a couple hot spots here, not everywhere, but a few places where wow, it's just too much, it's so shiny that that sort of happened. Now, so you've got just a little bit of the hot spot of the strawberry that's going, and we're going to do a few things like. You know, maybe come in and anywhere you want to add a highlight, you're like, I'm going to have a little bit there. If you want to add one or two, whoops, that highlight was too wet. And you can see that's sort of bleeding down. I'm going to take a little bit of my paper towel and I'm going to very gently dab it up. That's why you always see me wiping down my brush is because those drops tend to hide into the brush and come down and like surprise you in a way you do not enjoy. Now I'm going to get right into my kind of yellow green.
and my white making some very light colors and a few places I'm going to add this much brighter highlight to help us see those structures just a bit more refined. A little more yellow. You can even come in here and make sure that these leaves kind of have a bit of that extra pop. Can you see that extra pop? Now, it's thinner paint and get a lot on just the tip of our brush. And we're going to come here and add this little white highlight catching that little leaf. That catches that little leaf. Yeah. Yeah, because it catches that little leaf is what it's doing. And I'm also going to get a bit of my white highlight from over here, the one that had just a titchy yellow. And very carefully, I'm going to come along the top of this strawberry. With a fine, subtly broken line to catch its highlight. That's it, guys. Wow. Oh, wait, no, I want, want to show you one more thing. Okay. Almost that's it. I'm going to take a little bit of my brown and a smidge of my phthalo blue. Makes kind of a gray. And a couple places, I'm going to very carefully where the seeds might be a little bit in shadow. Oh. Blaze that. Just, I know it's subtle, but it makes a big difference. It's just the thing. It's the thing I care about. It's a thing. That makes sense. Do you guys love it? You gotta sign it though. I love it. We gotta sign it. Let's sign it. Let's pick a wonderful color to sign it. I'm gonna just come into here, I think, and just grab some of that wonderful yellow color, my little cool yellow that I have for my palette. And I guess I'll sign right here. Because it was a job well done, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Oh my goodness. Yay! It's almost sad to be coming to the end of this art journey with you. I really enjoyed sharing every part of this project. It is so much fun to paint strawberries. Everything about them, I think, is just enjoyable and delightful. The colors, the shapes, the reflections. It was just a hoot. Now, tomorrow, if you want to come back and join us, we're going to be doing this really gorgeous, sparkling, tropical sunset. I want you guys to just enjoy every part of your painting process and every part of this minute. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye! -bye.